Okay, so cold start. Now we get into the procedure itself and start to look at what this aircraft and the procedure is telling us. Now, automatic starter procedure can be activated by left wind home, automatic shutdown, left wind end. Are we going to do that? Of course not. Request electrical power by connect, contacting the ground crew F11, F8, F2, F1. That doesn't seem right. F11? That's not... No, that's an external external view mode. So I'm going to disregard that. I know that I would have to contact them through the comms... There we go. Like down here, comms menu. And then I contact the ground crew for electrical power. So I think that's just a... Uh, that might be just be tied into like the uh, the cold start or the uh, automatic start. I don't know. I'm going to skip it. Before we just start, set up automatic circuit breakers on the right vertical power to the following positions. Okay, so I got... Okay, battery switch is going to start in the off position. Generator switch on. So battery switch is still off. I'm going to leave that off throughout the start, it looks like. Generator switch goes on. And that's not going to do anything until I get the... Uh, the... Um, Engine up and running, the generator is mounted on the engine, and the generator that's controlled off and on by this switch is going to uh, apply power to the aircraft systems. But I think what's happening there, and what might be happening there, and I wish I had the schematic, it is not included in the manual, oddly enough, a schematic for electrical, everything else is. I think the reasoning behind putting it to the generator on position is that since the ground power ties into the same circuit that is run off the generator, I believe that this has to be on for ground power to go to the uh, go to the systems. I'll I'll test that once we get ground power on. Let me do that real, right now. Open radio menu. I do that using my mic switch down here. I think I do, and yet the radio menu is not coming up. Stand by a second while I troubleshoot. I'll be right back. Okay, and that's odd. Pressing the, the button doesn't do it, but if I do it from my HOTAS control, it does come up. So, okay, I'll take that. Let me go F8. And, okay, ground electrical power. What else do we have here? Refuel and rearm, your standard option. Ground power, request repair. Wheel chocks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Belson Tech. Let me play with this real quick. Okay, wheel chocks. I'm going to assume they, they start in the... like the uh, on position, or install wow. position, so... Oh, that's neat. Okay. Okay, wheel chocks are now placed. So now I might be able to actually do like a proper engine run up and functional check without having to hold the brakes or... Uh, that's what I run to in a lot of cases is that the procedure will call for an engine power setting that is just too much for the brakes to hold. And what would happen there is that the wheel chocks, which would be just placed... Um, let me go back out of this uh, menu into the external view real quick. Oh, look at that. We even got a, a visual indication of the wheel chocks. So yeah, with the wheel chocks in place, then I can uh, run up engine power and not have to worry so much about the aircraft rolling forward if I do have a brake failure, if I'm just not getting the correct authority out of the brakes. That is something that I wish every single module had that. There's no reason for every single module not to have that now that Belson Tech has figured out how to do it. So that's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay, now... Uh, back to this. Ground crew. Okay, let's go with ground electrical power on. Okay, copy. Okay, ground power is now on. I saw the lights come on down here. Now let me do let me test my little theory about whether or not the ground power is tied into the circuit and is broken by this switch. Well, no. I don't think it really matters where the switch is or is or isn't. So apparently, okay, I've got this switch for applying power to the systems off of the generator, and it looks like the ground power circuit is, it ties into the main, uh, the main bus independently of the generator. It's not behind this switch, in other words. Okay, I'll take that. Good enough. <laughs> See, we learned something right there. That's, that's what I'm here to do, and that's, uh, that's what I enjoy. Okay, now, let's see here. Uh, check that the landing gear status indicator light turns on. Three green to confirm I have power. That's Well, that's exactly what I saw anyway. Okay, turn on all the remaining switches on the right switch panel to enable aircraft flight and armament systems, except for the... Uh, I, if I could speak in... Uh, <laughs> speak Cyrillic. I know that's not a thing. If I could speak Russian, I would know that that says battery. That's, uh, that's the battery switch that is telling us to leave off right there. So it tells us just to go across and just uh, willy-nilly start throwing switches. And that's, of course, not what I'm going to do. I'm going to think about whether or not I want these things on or not. 
Okay, nose light master switch on. And I know that I had another switch over here for the nose light system that's going to... Why would I have two switches for that, though? So I've got that one to enable the system, then I've got another switch. Was it, like, right up here? Oh, right here. To turn the uh, nose light on. So it's off right now. I'll go switch on. Oh, I, I could see it from the internal. Okay, now I've got the nose light on. So what happens if I disable this? The light goes off. Weird that there would be two switches controlling that function. Again, now they're back on. Speaking of my... Uh... <laughs> there we go. Now, that's that's exactly what I was talking about. Now watch watch the amp meter as I enable the the switch. So now I'm I'm pulling, you know, however however many amps that that light pulls <laughs> is now displayed right there. So it, it's it's cumulative. So as I get more and more systems on, it's going to be pulling more and more amps off of the battery or off of the generator, or in this case, off of the ground power unit. Okay, so let me kill the <laughs> kill the nose light, and yeah, it goes back down. Awesome. And each system is going to have a different. Uh, a different amount of amps that it pulls. Okay, so. Okay, trim master switch. Yep, let's go on. Let's go to artificial horizon. Yep, I want that on. Okay, and I can hear that kick on. I believe that means that the artificial horizon uh, is running off of a, an inverter. So, and, and I read uh, I read ahead, actually, in the, the uh, part about the... It's actually off of the uh, DCS website, and it'll be in the manual as well, describing the power system. The power system itself is all direct current, but the individual components have a built-in inverter to uh, change the direct current to alternating current. And that is uh, kind of what you hear right there in the background is the inverter running. It has kind of like a little higher pitched sound. Okay, radio switch on. I believe that's just going to be like a master, <laughs> like a master uh, radio switch to apply power to all the radio systems, possibly. Okay, radio altimeter switch on. Okay, that's going to power my uh, radar altimeter. Okay, then I have a separate power switch for the indicator itself. Okay, we'll get back to that here in a little bit. Okay, I've got arc switch on, ARC. Is that... Uh, I can't remember if that's COM or NAV from the MiG-21. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. Okay, emergency drop switch on. I believe that is uh, going to apply power to the... Fuel tank jettison system. I don't have fuel tanks installed, and that's an assumption on my part. But I'm going to... I'll turn it on for now. There's no harm in it, and I'm bound to run across the exact function of that here in a, in a little bit. So if I want to turn it back off because I don't need it, I will. Okay, this is the bomb switch on and off. I definitely want to leave this off because, well, A, I don't have bombs, and B, I wouldn't want to turn that on on the ground anyway because that's like then I'm like uh, just a couple of switch throws away or a couple of uh, systems failures away from releasing a bomb same thing goes for the guns I have the 23 millimeter 37 millimeter uh, gun controls I'll leave those off until I'm airborne gun sight switch on and off I can turn that on to do a quick ops check of the gun sight and I've got the gun camera switch so I'll leave the gun camera off okay gun sight Yep, everything is looking good. I've got the uh, brightness uh, display knob working. Yeah, everything's fine on that, so I'm just going to turn that off because I do not need it, so I'll be able to re-enable it. Now that I know that it works, I'll be able to re-enable it uh, during the flight. And you know, all this is really geared around, if I don't need it, don't turn it on because uh, components on aircraft have like a mean time to failure. You know, the longer you leave something on or the longer you run a system, the more likely it is to fail and the more often it'll fail. Not to mention, you start pulling more and more amps off of the generator. That's more wear and tear and strain on aircraft systems. So if you don't need to turn it on, uh, there's no reason to. Okay, so that's that's that. Okay, now let's go to the next part of it. Okay, yeah, that was uh, that was everything that it called out right there. Next part. Okay, turn on fuel and engine systems on the left switch panel. Okay, this is going to be more or less the same type thing we did, except over on this panel. So I'm going to start with the engine instruments and light switch. It's going to be right here. Okay, that one's on. So now all the engine instruments and the lighting system that's associated with it are powered. Okay, I'm going to go to 
ignition switch on. I believe that one was right there next to it. Okay, ignition switch on. That's going to, well, it's going to enable the ignition system and allow us to, uh, allow us to start the engine. Otherwise, uh, nothing's going to happen. Okay, boost pump switch on and transfer pump switch on. So these would obviously, I think, be right here. Okay, boost pump. Isolating valve switch, where would the transfer pump uh, switch be? Right there, transfer pump. Okay, those are fuel system controls. The boost pump is a pump that's attached to the, uh, like the fuselage, the forward fuselage tank, which is right behind us, right here in the uh, the aircraft. So the boost pump right there is what uh, is going to feed fuel into the lines that go to the engine. And the transfer pump is what's going to transfer from the aft tank and also, I think, from the drop tanks to the forward fuselage tank. So that's, okay, good basic setup on the fuel system. Okay, start the engine. So at this point, we are ready for engine start. So let me think about where to go from here. Now, this is where I want to get into some of the systems diagrams. Let me read up here real quick in the diagram, see if there's anything else that I wanted to go over at this point when it comes to the fuel system or the engine system, then I'll be right back if something uh, interesting occurs to me. Okay, and what I suppose I could do right here is just double check the diagrams and make sure that everything that I said there was more or less accurate. Now, I mentioned the boost pump and the transfer pump. Uh, right here, the little, uh, it'll be labeled 15 and 16. That's the boost pump that's going to be feeding fuel along this line to this point right here. It's labeled 14 and that's what actually goes into the engine uh, feed lines. So that's the forward tank. The transfer pump is this pump right back here that's mounted just forward of the aft tanks. There are two, uh, like two aft tanks right there. So that pump then feeds fuel from the aft tank into the forward tank. And then of course we have our drop tanks which are just kind of, uh, these might actually be gravity fed. Just looking at the uh, well, uh, maybe not with the uh, with their position on the wings. Uh, either gravity fed or just kind of uh, fit. I don't think there's a like a pump specifically for them. So either gravity fed or it, it could just be uh, pressurized air. That kind of yeah, I think that would be more likely. Just uh, pressure that's inherent to the the fuel lines just kind of causes based on the uh, the setup of the system here for fuel to feed from the drop tanks into the it looks like it feeds into kind of like the top of the a forward fuselage tank. So, okay, so that's just a basic uh, look at the fuel system. Very, very simple system to, you know, to look at it. Just a couple of pumps and some feed lines to break it down very, very simply. And those associated switches were right there. Now, we also are, you know, since we're getting ready to start the engines, let's have a look at what's going to happen as we get into this procedure. And some of this will also apply to some of the switches we just threw. Now, okay, right up here, uh, label number one. This is the forward fuselage tank. Number 20 is the uh, boost pump. So the boost pump feeds fuel from the fuselage tank into the fuel filter, label number two. And then it gets transferred over to this area. Now, number three is the starting fuel pump. So what's going to happen is when I, I'm making an assumption here, I wish I had the electrical schematic to go along with this, what I'm assuming is going to happen is once I press this button, that's going to run the starter fuel pump and it's going to shunt fuel down to the igniter, which I believe was uh, powered by this switch. Ignition switch on, I believe, is referring to uh, this component. I could be wrong on that. I might be wrong on that. But okay, so that, that's what happens when I press... The start button here in just a second. Now also, and this is just the normal systems operation, okay, so it flows from the boost pump through the filter, okay, now it goes <laughs> to the right down this line into two high pressure pumps. Now a lot of stuff happens here with like a little uh, pathway back to a, uh, a barostat isolation valve and regulator, which I don't fully understand. I would need more information, but generally speaking, it goes from the high pressure pumps through the throttle so you can see right here, this component on the diagram is the throttle. So as I move the throttle back and forth, what that's doing is physically opening and closing a fuel valve right there at that part of the, uh, of the system. So from the throttle, then it goes into this component. It's labeled number 11. That's the shutoff valve. 
and that is going to be the lever that's right down here, a fuel shutoff valve below the throttle component. Now, assuming that lever is open, it's going to allow fuel into the uh, what are essentially uh, essentially the injectors. So a lot of stuff has to happen in order for fuel to get to the uh, uh, get to the engine and for everything to work there. So we'll see all this stuff in in motion in the next few steps. But that's the basic operation of the fuel and engine control system. So we might come back to that if anything else occurs to me as we actually perform the the steps here. But okay, let me get back to the checklist and get to the uh, uh, get to the uh, actual startup procedure. And I hope you are enjoying this. I know this is probably uh, a lot of you may not have uh, known what you were in for, but at some point, yeah, we are going to start this thing up. If you wanted like a, a quick down and dirty how to do it, uh, there's always uh, there's going to be like hundreds of videos showing that just step by step. Uh, but that's not what I do. And I'll have a link to one that I would recommend in the uh, in the video description as well.